Hi, good to see you, I'm Max, and in this video we will talk about what happens after Voltaire in regards with, obviously, Cardano. But before it starts, let's first have a quick recap of what Voltaire exactly is. So, Voltaire is the fifth release, or the fifth era, um, on the Cardano timeline, and what Voltaire will bring is essentially governance, and Voltaire will do that in in, in essentially releasing a set of tools and protocols which will allow the Cardano community to vote on proposals of the network, as well as um, have a, a certain stake in the game when it comes to holding ADA, and so. As an ADA holder, you will be able to vote on proposals yourself directly or delegate your vote to someone else who you trust in regards with decision making. And so that, that's the basic model of liquid democracy. Liquid democracy is, an, is essentially a mix between direct democracy, where you vote directly yourself on all the proposals, and representative democracy, which we have now, right now, mostly in our um, Western society, where essentially you vote for a politician who will represent you uh, in Parliament. And so, liquid democracy is a mix between these two things, where, well, if you feel comfort, uh, comfortable, you can directly vote yourself, or you delegate your vote to someone else. And that's mostly Voltaire, right? So Voltaire will uh, enable the creation of uh, a treasury fund, and uh, the community will be able to vote on decisions regarding the treasury fund and how the treasury fund should be used in order to maintain the uh, ecosystem alive. Now, the first thing, and I think it's the most obvious thing you would ask yourself, what happens after Voltaire is, well, what happens with IOHK? Because right now, IOHK is the, well, you know, with Emergo and the Cardano Foundation, but Cardano is pretty much the entity um, developing Cardano, right? Uh, Emergo has made a lot of commercial partnerships. They have been um, pretty active in Japan as well as in, in other regions like, for example, India and um, pretty much Asia in general, actually. And the Cardano Foundation has been making some partnerships. They are also organizing the uh, ambassador program. But at the end of the day, um, I think it's fair to say that IOHK is, well, clearly leading uh, the project right now and the driving force uh, behind Cardano. And the question is, what will happen once Voltaire is here? Because as you may know, IOHK, con I I I oh, IOHK's contract ends with the release of Voltaire. So they had planned initially, uh, at the beginning of, of, of Cardano, they had, uh, I think it was, no, not, not a two-year contract, a four-year contract, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to develop Cardano until Voltaire. And so, um, and so once Voltaire is here, well, it will be up to the community, essentially, to vote. Uh, the way it will happen, the way, the way it will probably happen, is that IOHK will create a proposal um, regarding the treasury funds to uh, to ask for funds in order to maintain their activities. And in this proposal, they will lay out what they will be working on in the future. And it will be up to the community to decide whether or not uh, they should get these funds. Um, so essentially, IOHK will start to be accountable to the public, right? Right now, this is not the case. Right now, IOHK can take whatever, whatever decisions they want. They are not really accountable, right? They are kind of accountable to the community in the sense that, obviously, they need to protect their image. Um, but at the end of the day, there is no direct accountability. With Voltaire, there will. Now, a second point in this video I, I would like to talk about is the stake pool economy, and it's it's a, it's a concept I, I invented, um, and 
What I mean with the stable economy is that, and I will probably make a separate video about it because I think it's a really interesting idea, um, but what I mean with the stable economy is this idea that the stick pools are and will essentially be the driving forces of Cardano uh, once Voltaire is here. The reason why is because stick pools have the perfect business model essentially. They have um, they, they have power in the network by validating blocks on the network. Uh, so you know they, they have the power that the mining pools have on, on Bitcoin, for example. Um, Additionally, they have a clear source of, uh, of revenues. Uh, third, um, they will likely become very powerful entities once Voltaire is here because you will be able to delegate your vote to someone else or directly vote yourself, but I, I think a lot of people will delegate their vote to someone else. And because of that, uh, well, they will probably delegate it to other sick pool, right? Because you know, your money is already there, so why not give them your, your voting power if you trust them with your money? Um, and so, stake pools are going to gain to win an, 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 an well, enormous amount of power. And additionally, stake pools are clearly incentivized by the system to drive the ecosystem forward. Mainly because having a stake pool doing things attracts delegators, right? Uh, take for example the. Uh, um, the ADA pools stake pool. Well, it attracts delegators, right? Mainly because ADA pools is an explorer and they are constantly building things. Well, they were they were they were able to attract a ton of delegators. And when you look at, for example, Skylights, they too, you know, they are they are building stuff and they were able to attract delegators. And we are also an example of that, right? We have a stake pool. We're organizing activities in Africa. We have our, our we, we have our um, Haskell course at the moment in Africa, and you know, in in the past few weeks, we have been able to attract delegators thanks to that. And so, that's really the main idea behind the stake pool economy. Is that essentially, stake pools are the perfect way of uh, driving forward the ecosystem, and they are kind of incentivized to do it. Um, and so you are probably going to see stake pools gaining more and more power essentially in, in the future once Voltaire is here. Because, you know, again, they are validating the blocks. They will get some, some power in, in the voting proposals. They have a lot of authority because, you know, they are known entities in the ecosystem. When you look, for example, at Digital Fortress, uh, Bloom Pool, um, Skylights, uh, and these types of th stick pools. They are known stick pools in the ecosystem. Um, they, they, uh, and obviously, they will be doing some activities w in the current ecosystem, which will, again, make them more powerful because they will have, they will essentially control uh, a part of the ecosystem through their activities. So, Stake pools are definitely going to gain a lot of power in my opinion once Voltaire is here. Now, let's move to the third point of this video, which is politics, right? As as you will be able to delegate your vote to someone else, and you will essentially be voting for people, like you would vote uh, for a president or uh, a politician. You will be vote. You will be able to do that in the current ecosystem. And so politics are going to start playing a major role. And uh, I think that's clearly underestimated right now, mainly because um, it's crazy how, how much impact that will have on the ecosystem. Like, I could, for example, become a, pol a Cardano politician, try to grab as much delegation power as possible. And through that, I could, for example, um, arrange, you know, partnerships <laughs> with a stake pool, for example, and, you know, kind of deal with them and, you know, have some kind of uh, behind the scenes <laughs> uh, collaboration. And there's nothing illegal, right? Because 
Cardano is not a country, right? If you were to do that with a country and you were to receive some money behind the scenes from an entity to give them some uh, some benefits in, in, in certain activities as a politician, well, you would obviously be charged and you would obviously go to the jail. But in Cardano, that's not the case, right? It's centralized. It's, it's a decentralized ecosystem. And it's, it's essentially up to the community to keep these politicians accountable. And so it will be very interesting to see the mechanics and how this will play out. Because, well, kind of obviously, that these politicians will be incentivized, or at least the current way, uh, from what we know, they will kind of be incentivized to not necessarily play by the rules, <laughs> if you might say it like that. So it will be interesting to see how they, our first Voltaire plays out, so how the governance mechanisms will work, because right now I'm speculating a lot, of course, but before that we will need to know how the uh, governance part will play out. Um, but I think that this notion of politics in this ecosystem will be very interesting, because right now, when you look at Ethereum, for example, and you look at uh, decentralized finance protocols uh, with governance on Ethereum, there isn't that much politics yet, right? They are mostly s still the founders essentially running the protocol, but in a more decentralized way. Um, I think with Cardano, we have the opportunity to do, to do that way differently with a true governance and with people actually coming out and gaining more and more power and, you know, maybe even becoming more influential than IOHK or any other entity, right? That, that could definitely happen. And when you look at some influential people actually in the ecosystem right now, when you look, for example, think of Rick McCracken uh, from, the, from Digital Fortress, um, I don't know, uh, Sebastian Guillermo from um, Sebastian from um, Emergo, you know, these are influential people who, you know, as politicians could gain a lot of voting power. So, you know, that's going to be uh, interesting to see how this plays out. And then finally, this kind of link to the politics, Cardano ambassadors, right? Because with Voltaire, Cardano uh, ambassadors are currently under, under the um, umbrella of the Cardano Foundation, which uh, which pays them, uh, or actually, well, I guess rewards them because it's not really paying because it's it's not a lot. Um, rewards them based on the um, of their activities. So you know, I, I'm I'm a Cardano ambassador. I create content, and so I'm rewarded on the quality of the content I create, and. Um, and right now, the, as a Cardano ambassador, I wouldn't be able to go full-time Cardano, mainly because it's just not profitable enough. Uh, I wouldn't be able to win enough money through the Cardano Foundation in order to be able to survive. Um, but with Voltaire, Cardano ambassadors are more than probably going to change from umbrella and essentially start to being accountable to the community. And so you could really see people actually being employed full time by the Cardano protocol. That's like, pff, that's insane, right? But it could be possible. And I think it will happen eventually. Um, mainly because, you know, Cardano ambassadors are already pretty influential in the ecosystem. E ecosystem. Again, think of Rick McCracken, for example, pretty influential. Um, and with, um, with Voltaire, they will, at least I will, <laughs> create a proposal to ask for funds to, uh, you know, just pursue their activities in the ecosystem and allow them to essentially uh, dedicate more time to the Cardano ecosystem. So I think this is going to be very interesting, how this plays out and how um, how the Cardano ambassadors will play a role in, in that regard. And I think as ambassadors, um, they also have an advantage in terms of the politics, right? Because most current ambassadors are here during since, since a long time, and so they know a lot of people in the ecosystem. And so once you will be able to gain delegation power, you will have some uh, voting whales, if I may say like that. So people who attract a lot of delegation power, 
and these guys will be able to have a ton of power in the ecosystem. So it will be very interesting how this plays out. Um, either way, what you need to remember from, from this video is that uh, when um, IOHK will be accountable to the community once Voltaire is here, two, um, we are definitely going towards a stakepole economy where stakepoles are the driving forces behind Cardano once Voltaire is here, three, you're going to see a ton, a ton of politics once Voltaire is here, and four, um, Cardano ambassadors will probably be one of the first people to go full-time Cardano and be employed by, by the protocol, which is, in my opinion, very interesting. If you liked uh, this video, please do share uh, it with all your friends, neighbors, family, lovers, dog, uh, cats, cats too, don't forget. Uh, <laughs> please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, make sure also to follow us on Twitter at Pool. And yeah, uh, see you in uh, another video. Bye.